Number 49, the people of the state of New York versus Akeem Wallace. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Your Honors. Uh, Robert Kemp on behalf of Akeem Council, Wallace. Council, may I ask you to wait one moment? Oh. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh, yes. I'm sorry. Good Continue. afternoon. I didn't realize my colleague was here. <laughs> uh, Robert Kemp on behalf of Akeem Wallace. I'm requesting two minutes of rebuttal time. Yes, of course. Uh, may, may it please the court. I, I think we can all agree that this is not your typical weapons possession case. It was an unfortunate circumstance where an employee at a McDonald's with no criminal history whatsoever accidentally shot himself in the leg at a, while sitting in a table in the, in the restaurant. But based upon the record of this case and the statute as written, he should have only been convicted of the lesser Are included. Are you saying that any employee at any establishment uh, is entitled to carry a concealed weapon without a permit? Yes, Your Honor. As the statute is written, the penal law gives two mitigating circumstances for uh, where a person deserves a, a greater expectation of security in a place where a person spends most of his time, and that's the home or, or place or of business. It, or is it that, that those are, are two places when someone is the proprietor of a business or the owner of a home, are those places where one would feel um, the need to defend that business or that home um, well, the, the first department in Buckmeyer and second in Francis and the fourth department and, and Fearon have said that. They've put out these qualifiers that are not in the statute, that you must have a proprietary interest well, in the property. Well, but it doesn't say place of employment. It says place of business. So is there, is there some dis any distinction there at all? Well, it, it's, it's unclear what the statute really, what the intent of the uh, legislation really means. This is from 1964. So who knows if in 1964 they meant place of employment. It's just not sure. It's not defined. There's no legislative history that says what a place of business oh, well, is. The joint how is your, Council, how is your argument consistent, consistent with the intent and purposes of the overall scheme of New York State's uh, gun control laws and penal law? I, I, I'm, I'm not following. Well, I, I understand there's a, a, a need for a firearms regulation and crime prevention and uh, the carrying of unlicensed weapons, but it's just not clear from the statute what they meant. They, from, even from some of the cases, they say there's mitigating circumstances of uh, a greater enhancement of personal security and where a person spends most of their time because people, even absent from uh, your waking hours, you spend a lot of time at your work. So there's no really the distinction. The logic of them. it is, though, if you equate the two, they would naturally have similar interests. And of course, a, a homeowner has a possessory interest in his home, but an employee has no possessory in interest in their place of business. So I, I understand the logic there. And, and uh, so, so they're not, if they're strictly equivalent, if the words mean the same thing in the same circumstances, then that would work against your argument, wouldn't it? Uh, no, it won't, because it it's the second department and fourth department that have put on this qualifier that it's a possessory interest. You have it's to not on. in the statute. It's not in so, the legislative history that there must be a possessory interest. So, so a McDonald's employee would have a possessory interest in a place of business? No, no. What I'm saying is that it's not in the statute that it's a person or employee has no, to have I a possessory interest. I agree with you there, interest. but what, what the statute does say is it equates those two phrases. It, it, play, it says a person in a place of business or... Uh, um, uh, or a place or, or in your home, you, you can have it. So that says to me that those are similar circumstances, similar types of situations, and that there's a rationale behind it. Go ahead. Uh, well, I, I would disagree, Your Honor. Okay. It doesn't say your home or your place of business. It says a person's home or place of business. It doesn't, I don't mean to split hairs, but it doesn't say a person's home and a so person's place of business. As the logic is Judge Stein said, then it, it was, I, I think, making reference to then. So I work at a Walmart. And every employee in the Walmart can bring a gun to work. That's according to the statute as written. It's not delineated what exactly it's. So, meant. so where are you uh, getting this place of business uh, is a synonym for place of employment argument from? Like, uh, how, how do you get that? How do get, get to that point? Uh, unfortunately, the legislation from 1960. Right. If does they defined it, uh, if they defined it in the definition section, we, we wouldn't be here. That's correct. So, so I want to know how you get to business equals employment. 
the, the actual intent of the legislator is not really clear. But based upon the actual wording of the statute, that's what it says. It says a person's home or place of business. It, it doesn't say place of employment. Uh, and what I've said previously, it, it, from the legislation, it's not clear what they meant. They could have meant place of employment, place of business back so, in so, so if we track it back uh, when it was, and we look at the penal law section 400, the licensing statute, doesn't that give us some guidance? Uh, and, and when we look at the legislative history behind that? Well, I don't know if you could look at that because this is regarding the lesser included offense because criminal possession of the weapon in the fourth degree is a lesser included offense. And that's what the statute says, that there's two mitigating circumstances where there's a lesser offense. And that's where, where a person spends most of their time and where a person deserves an enhanced right of security is well, basically so where they spend most of their time. If I'm a student at a university, that's where I spend most of my time. Does that mean, but can I consider that my place of business since I'm not working, but my, my work is going to school, so does that mean that all the students can bring concealed weapons to school with them? But that's not what the, the penal law states. It states person's home or place of business. It, well, I know, but we're, we're interpreting what place of business means. That's and, true. And it could I, be a church, it could be a volunteer. So if you're talking about personal security, I, I'm just, I'm, I, I can see a parallel. My suggestion is that maybe there's a parallel between where you go um, to you know, to, to serve hamburgers and where you go to study, that, that being your, your job. I, I mean, think that's a big distinction. It's not a place of business. I mean, it's, I don't think what that's if, what the statute. What if I'm a, a crack dealer and I'm in an abandoned home and that's my place of business? It's a misdemeanor? I wouldn't consider that a traditional place of business. It must be some Well, some okay, how about a taxi about. cab or a hot dog stand or an Uber driver? How do but, we know what a I mean, now you're saying, I think, that we can't attribute place of business. We can't interpret it literally, that now you back to traditional place of business, and I'm not sure what that is. Well, it's c cases have held that a taxi driver or a, the, the cab actually is a place of business. And some have held no. Pardon? And some have held no, right? Well, where they've been outside, I guess, on the street corner. Some cases have said no where they're outside or whatever happens. I, I wouldn't assume that a hot dog vendor would be, because that's in an unlimited public access area. Some of the cases speak of a somewhat limited public access area as opposed to a hot dog vendor on a street what, what or I on see, a street corner in a playground. In or, addition to all the problems that I, I think you hear people asking you about, somewhat going back to what the chief judge asked you about, it does seem that this is an exception, right? That's true. That, okay, an exception that seems to somewhat go against the, the general public policy, although it's still a crime. That's true, it's, it's still a crime. It's not an exemption still a from criminal liability. But nevertheless, shouldn't this exception be read narrowly? Because your position is to read it in a rather sweeping form, which seems to me to then completely undermine the public policy. I understand, Your Honor, but it's the statute is written. And it does And that's the make problem. It says business, not where. It, it, it actually says in such person's home or place of business. It doesn't say in such person's home or where they work. That's true. Uh, again, I, we keep going. And back if to the, the focus was going to be employment and work, one That's would true. think that it would say work. <laughs> Who knows? Back in 1964, if that's really what they meant. Uh, unfortunately, that's the way it's been written. Well, I guess in part we're going to figure that out, right? <laughs> I understand that. Thank you, thank counsel. You. Counsel. May it please the court, Daniel Punch for the people. Counsel, um, what constitutes a place of business within the meaning of the statute? Your Honor, I believe the majority had it correct that a place of business is a place where a person has a possessory interest and um, a place to which the public has limited access. Um, I would argue against the dissent that the place of business invariably means any place well, where... Well, the problem with using a possessory uh, interest is, is that uh, isn't it true that perhaps more than one employee of a particular establishment may have the right to exclude others? Uh, um, and, and so is that really a workable test? Well, if not a possessory interest, then, then a degree of control, a controlling in interest in the fixed location um, where the business is, I believe, would be a workable test. Um, and I don't know if necessarily the... Uh, I, I, I guess what I'm asking you to do is help me figure out 
what you think the rule should be. I know that in your brief you talk about a totality of the circumstances, multi-factor test, and, and, and uh, that we should eschew some sort of bright line rule. But it seems to me that uh, if we're to give guidance to whether it's prosecutors who are making charging decisions, whether it's to judges inspecting grand jury minutes, uh, or to jurors, uh, that we need a definition, and, and that definition has to come from someplace. Uh, um, Your Honor, I, I believe it's up to this court to interpret the place of business exception, and I, I believe that it should be interpreted as one, it's not, it's not a place where there's unfettered access by the public, and two, I believe it's either some controlling interest or whether the weapon can be used within the scope of the business, which would be, which would mean that you have a duty to protect, an enhanced duty to protect that that location or an enhanced right to protect that can, location. Can you explain what you mean by unfettered access to the public? What does that mean? Well, such as in this case, the dining room of a, uh, of a McDonald's where anyone can just go in. Um, and this case is a good example of that because of the dangerousness of an un, un, unlicensed handgun um, with anyone not necessarily who knows so, how to So could he bring, Mr. Wallace, bring the gun to the manager's office uh, and then be guilty, uh, you know, where, where perhaps they have the cash receipts um, uh, on the other side of the counter? Uh, and then it's a misdemeanor? Uh, no, Your Honor, I could, because that's only one prong of the test. I, I think it has to be both that he has a controlling interest and that he, it's not um, in public access. So, so what, uh, what do you mean by controlling interest? An expectation of privacy, the same as he would in his home. Okay. So are you saying that in the McDonald's, no, that is no one's place of business? Not as, not as interpreted, not as it should be interpreted in the statute, yes. What about the franchise owner? If, if somebody owns the, the, that particular McDonald's, then that could be his place of business. Well, I'm the sorry. franchise as, as manager, as a, the person who is physically in charge of that building every day, that restaurant every day, and he lords over all of the employees there. He's in charge of the cash. He's in charge of schedules. What about that person? What would, and he likely would be entitled to mm -hmm. the. Can, the, can that person session. authorize someone else? If it, let's say they're the manager of three McDonald's, and they can't be there all the time. Mm -hmm. Can they authorize someone else? Uh, the second department would say yes. I would say no. I don't think the applicability of the uh, of the penal law. Why not? Is it less their place of business because they've got three and they're a very good business person? I'm sorry. Um, could why, you say why isn't it their place of business simply because they've got a couple more and they may have to authorize someone during their absence? Well, it would still be that person's place of business, but mm -hmm. I don't think that they should be the decisive factor on whether or not the uh, the exception should apply. Um, and there's, there, I mean, if they need somebody I to I guess protect, the question uh, really boils down to, is someone in managerial and supervisory control allowed to, a, a, an employer as opposed to an employee, allowed to uh, um, give the place of business exception to one of their employees? That's the question that inevitably will come up. Right, and I, I don't think it, that should be the case. If they want to hire somebody to protect their business, they can hire someone with a, who has a handgun license. So you're saying the franchise owner can I guess the problem is not so much with the charging decision by the prosecutor's office or the police, but the rule, uh, the instruction to the jury. How do we instruct the jury? Or to Judge Feynman's point, how does the trial judge review the grand jury minutes? And I think that's where the issue really, the rub is, not charging decisions of the prosecutor who can look at all of the facts attendant to that arrest and make it a, an appropriate decision. Well, I think the, the, the judge would have to instruct that it's a person with a controlling interest or an expectation of privacy in the area, as well as a unlimited, a, an area of unlimited public access. So, so do you agree that there could be more than one person for business that has for whom that is their place of business. Yes, the same as there could be more than one person. So it could home. be whoever was the franchise, let's say there's a franchise owner to this McDonald's who, for whom this is their place of business, but it could also be Mr. Wallace at, at the time that he's working there, no? Well, I don't think it could be Mr. Wallace because in this case we have, under the facts of this case, that's not his duty. We, that's, that came out in the testimony. Um, it's possible that he could have a, it could be someone else in the, why, why is it not, what was missing from his work that you think takes him out of the ambit of this particular 
category. They, they specifically testified that he had no duty of protection. His job was to make sure that the other employees were were um, doing their job and that the customers were taken care of. It's I don't think there's there's any reason to think how that much he had managerial any... experience or obligation and duty do you have to have to fit within the statute? <coughs> that exception. You would have to be up the. It, I don't think the title of manager would be controlling. It would be whether or not you have a uh, controlling interest in the property. Well, you, you're really so, back on. You're really back on your totality of the circumstances test, right? In, yes, in your, your honor. Yeah. Well, but then how does the how, how does the a defendant or I mean not necessarily a defendant? How does a citizen or a resident uh, know uh, whether it's okay? You know. I mean, obviously, it's illegal whether it's a misdemeanor or, or, or a felony, but how do they know what they're, they're facing uh, in terms of making a decision uh, when arrested uh, to plead guilty if they don't know what the rule is because you're going to just charge a jury about all these factors and, and who knows how it's going to come out? Well, Your Honor, again... Yeah, I, it just seems to me that uh, everybody would be better served with some sort of a clear rule. I agree, Your Honor, but the, uh, I think the legislature chose to use the place of business because they, it could, they didn't want to narrow it down to pl any place of employment. So, so um, let's say you have a, a, a family jewelry business and they have three locations, three stores, all right? Uh, does it matter whether, you know, the son is in one store running it, the daughter is in another store running it, and, and mom and dad go to the third store? Uh, but it's all incorporated, and uh, mom and dad really are the owners of the business. The son and the daughter don't get it. The benefit. Well, to to or make it to make the statute clear, I think you would have to make it that way. I mean, you can hire you could hire someone to to protect the store if it's not your store um, with a with a licensed handgun. But I think it, it, I mean it would be difficult to narrow it down so that the public would know that what's illegal and what's not. Because even ownership is a difficult test, right? Ownership of the business. What if the can be. person carrying the gun owns shares in Walmart, and they bring it to Walmart? I mean, technically, they own part of Walmart. They own a part of it, but they have no possessory interest or no right. expectation of privacy. I don't. So, what if we think that the best definition, consistent with the legislative intent, and as the chief judge I think was alluding to earlier, the overall gun control regime um, in New York State, what would your best definition of that possessory interest be? The best def definition would be, I believe, it would come down to the expectation of privacy, whether or not you have it there. So, so how would one frame that? Let, let's say I work in a place where I have a permanent locker. Does that give me an expectation of privacy in the locker, and maybe I can have the gun at the locker? That's a good question, Your Honor. Um, well, doesn't this all relate to protection issues, to protection of your place of overall place of business? Isn't that what we're talking about? Yes, Your Honor. And I think the, the, the reason that expectation of privacy is, is relevant, I think, is because where you have an expectation of privacy, you have a heightened duty or right to protect. Um, which I think is the basis of the, the exception. Thank so you. I've worked, I'm sorry, I mean, I've worked at a place of four, 40 years, and this is like my home. Everyone I work with, these are my closest, dearest friends. Have I got an expectation? Now, am I interested in protecting the only place I know is my workplace and the only place I'm comfortable other than my home? No, Your Honor, I think that would just be too subjective. The, f the fact that you feel that it is, I don't think we can make a, a law based on that. Thank you. Thank you, Counsel. Mr. Kemp? Uh, Your Honors, uh, I brought up some issues regarding enhance or the, uh, inherent right of self-defense when I talked about constitutional issues of Heller and uh, McDonald and Kachalski. And I think that relates to what you mentioned, too, but you have, have it a right to protect yourself. It's not just the penal, penal law just doesn't say that you have a possessory interest. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that you must be authorized to possess that Yeah, but in that New weapon. York, you've got to have 
right? You've got to have permission to carry the loaded weapon. Yes, yes, for, for a, a licensed weapon. But under the circumstances of penal law, uh, you know, 265.03, for the unlicensed, you're, there's two mitigating circumstances at the home or place of business. Right, and that was my point before. Shouldn't we, be, shouldn't we then be interpreting that narrowly as opposed to broadly? Under your rule, many, many, many people that's they true. happen to be breaking this law would fit under the exception versus something much more narrower contains those individuals who might end up with a misdemeanor instead of the felony. I, I understand that, Your Honor, that New York State has an uh, interest, <laughs> compelling interest in firearms regulation, but the penal law just doesn't say that. That would kind of create some kind of, in this situation, that creates some kind of economic disparity or economic discrimination regarding a, an owner would only be liable for, or for a misdemeanor, and at the same time, a worker could be liable for a, for a felony. What if they both are, have unlicensed weapons at the same time? So accordingly, the owner would get a felony, I mean, the owner would get a misdemeanor. The, well, what, uh, the what about the, the, the home, in the home, that, that provision of the statute, okay? So if yes. I'm in my home, I'm allowed to have a weapon there. Um, but if I invite you to my home, does that mean you're entitled to have a weapon in my home? I don't know if the cases would say that. I mean, that hasn't been well, really... Well, but the, 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 the two things are the same in the statute. We're, we're back to That's true. So... If it applies to one, it, it seems to me it would apply to the other. I, I don't know if I can answer that question, We're, you know, because there, there really haven't been cases that have really addressed that. But, but how would you answer that? Similarly, question? I would say that, well, it's not that person's home. In this circumstance, it is that person's place of business. And that's what the statute says. It is exactly that person's place of business. And there's, regardless of whether... So under, under your reading, the... Oh, the owner of the business, let's just say there really is only one owner, closely held, no shares, no partner, it's one individual. That person, I assume you would say, of course, that's their place of business within the meaning of the exception. Correct. But everyone that that person hires, it's also their place of business. Correct. I would say that, Your Honor. And it should be the lesser included offense of a misdemeanor. Thank you. Thank you, Counsel.